Let the peace, love, and blessing of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Marriage according to God's purpose. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader, Olumba, Olumba, Obu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, Matthew chapter 19, verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which hath made them in the beginning made them male and female? Second lesson, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Golden text, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Quote, Brethren, I want to reveal to you something great in this gospel. Today, everyone call on Jesus, but they do not practice his teachings. When you take a look at the world's high level in education, in, in true institute, of learning, churches, and the government. Each of these fields call on the name of Jesus, but they neglect his teachings. By reading these three lessons, it is obvious that you know what it is all about. You have also seen the world caught naked in vain philosophy Contrary to God's ordained purpose, people today claim that, out of sympathy, they feel for women. They play the role of the Good Samaritan in accumulating concubines for themselves. Such people readily quote King Solomon, who married 700 wives and 300 concubines. This is foolish conception. Does it mean that if your father made a mistake and because of the mistake he died, you being his child should repeat such mistake and also face death? I want to reveal this gospel to you so that the whole world may know. So that those who out of ignorance would have perished may be saved. Some Bible scholars have it that it is only the bishop that should marry one wife. Others say it is the pastor. Some refer to the elders of the church. But what does this Bible text say? It says at the beginning God created male and female. And why then do you seek for the third party? Adam and Eve were just one comp companion. No one is given a license to marry more than one wife. Or do you want to tell me that Adam was a bishop or a pastor or an elder of any church? This is not a matter that concerns church or any form of worship. Church business is something of recent years. We are, speaking of, we are speaking about an issue that concerns all the children of God. God's word is beneficial for teaching and for setting things right so that when you hear and practice them, you are saved as you find yourself now. So were the whites. But they were actuated by the word of God and they immediately took steps to amend their former marital status and complied with God's ordained purpose for with God's ordained purpose of one man 
one wife. This is a must, notwithstanding whether you are a church goer or a juju priest. This rule must be kept. You must marry only one wife in your whole life. Let no man deceive you that you can marry as many wives as possible. Anyone who does that is a condemned person before God and will receive his punishment accordingly. The tribulation, distress, unrest, and deaths that the world is facing today is because they have violated the law of God. God is one, one Father and one Son. Therefore, that one entity must be maintained in marriage. What God are joined together, let no man put asunder. Brethren, tell me, if you are joined to a woman and you take another woman into this relationship, where are you going to fit her in? Undoubtedly, there is going to be trouble. There will be quarrel, fighting, distress, ill health, unrest, and even death. These are what polygam polygamous life has brought to mankind. Never should you take this matter lightly. It is a serious matter before God. However, I am not going to reveal or deal with the type of punishment God has for the polygamists in this gospel. It is terrible and dangerous if any man falls and put asunder what God has joined by marrying more than one wife. The lack of love Patience, interest in the work of God, lawlessness emanates from violating this divine purpose for a man. In order for you to be more convinced about God's joining a man and a woman as a pair, let us now examine the birth of the first woman, Eve. In Eve's first birth, she had twins, one male and one female. In her second conception, she brought forth another twin, one male and one female. They came in pairs. But why was Eve so blessed with twins? That was so in order to correspond with God's arrangement from the beginning. He made them male and female. When Cain when Cain killed Abel his brother, Adam knew his wife again. This time Eve gave birth to a baby boy named Seth to take the place of Abel whom Cain slew. You can now see your vain reasoning in which you claim that with just one wife, reproduction will be slow. The mandate of multiplying is not within your power. If our forefathers made the mistake and took to polygamous life, would you also emanate them now that the truth has come? I know that. Not all are destined for perdition, but those who are for life should take the chance and correct themselves and escape the impending punishment on lawless ones. Although a mistake made in ignorance may be liable to lesser punishment, but a willful violator of God's law cannot escape full punishment. I want you to know this, whether you have been preached to or not, but as long as you were created by God, you must marry only one wife. Take a look at a polygamist's home, the ruins, the confusion, the hatred, bitterness, jealousy, 
division quarrel and fighting from the beginning it was not so for God made them male and female. This issue does not require any preaching at all. You are just one and not two. It is because people have overstepped the boundaries of old. Did you not read from the scriptures that God created male and female from the beginning? For just as the woman is out of the man, so also the man is through the woman. But all things are out of God. In the Western world, this principle is strictly kept. Whether you are a millionaire or not, it is because of this act of obedience to God's divine purpose in marriage that God's face shine on them. Those who do not want to marry remain in their community and they do not mix with the married one. This is not an English law. It is God's divine order in marriage and it is accompanied with bountiful blessings to those who practice it. But to the rebels, woe and untold sufferings. I am speaking to you people in this country, Nigeria, who claim to be wise in your vain thinking that women are more than men, and as such, polygamy should be encouraged. Some critics say that men were killed during the war, therefore reducing the population of men. These are no criteria for you to marry more than one wife. God's law is one. Any imaginary or technical interpretation to it is contrary. Such people are rebels and must be punished by God. Why people attribute their sufferings and tribulation to ghosts or demons and wishes and evil forces and conclude that there is no God is because they have violated the divine principle of marriage. Now, how then can they see the love of God and his divine guidance? Solomon, Solomon did so and this landed him in apostasy and with adversaries. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. That was in John chapter 16, verses 12 to 13. Brethren, look. The Comforter is here to guide you into all the truth. Let us revert back to the Garden of Eden where it all started. The ratio is clear. One is to one. And the answer is one. There is no more ignorance of the whole issue. One man, one wife. That is all. There are those who predestined to live a celibate life. I am not speaking about these ones. I am concerned with what touches man and woman relationship in quarrel. It is lack of self-control, wrong desire that induces people to marry more than one wife. In this way, mankind has violated God's ordained purpose for marriage. If you count all those who were polygamists in times past, you will agree that none of them had peace with God. You can imagine the calamity that befell David because of marrying many wives. You are also aware of the woeful end of Solomon in the exercise and also the Israelites who were polygamists 
the disastrous end they faced. Yes, they did this in ignorance. What about you who is marrying more than one wife? What type of life are you enjoying? Your personal experience in this undertaking should dictate to you that you are off the rail belonging to any religious organization praying and singing of songs are no signs of being a man of God. To be a man of God you must practice the, instru the instructions of God and one of the foremost instructions is marrying only one wife. You should be contented with one wife. Only those who keep to this rule see God face to face and have his face shine upon them. Such ones see the glory of God. It is said that obedience is better than sacrifice. You are subjecting yourself to vigorous fasting and prayer and song will not save you if you contravene this law. What God are joined together no man should put asunder. No woman is joined to a man has any right to seek a release by entertaining another man. And no man after being locked in this wedlock has any right whatsoever to seek another wife, either for a change or otherwise. If any of the party, that is man or woman, who have now become one, seeks illegal release, such one is a rebel and must be punished by God. On the point of separation, the rights so deserved and kept by God, I do not intend to discuss that in this gospel. The main issue is that of marriage in, in God's purpose. No matter what race or color or language or creed, this ordained rule must be adhered to. God is angry with those who are marrying more than one wife. That is why the scriptures say marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. But were mongers and adulterers, God will judge. That was in Hebrew chapter 13 verse 4. It does not matter whether you did it ignorantly or not. The judgment is on you, although you will not be flogged. But as you know that fire burns, and if you put your finger into fire, you'll be burned. A house that is divided cannot stand. A city divided against itself cannot stand either. This is the trouble in the world today you marry this woman today and the next day you are seen with another you are fond of changing women spreading illegitimate illegitimate and delinquent children everywhere yes this is the out our city that is divided against itself it cannot stand it must collapse in judgment no matter how deep the love of a wife to a husband is. From the day the husband takes another wife, such love must come to an end. All the care, the tender affection, compliments will take their leave, our Lord Jesus Christ said. But I say unto you that whoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication caused her to commit adultery and whosoever shall marry her that is divorce committed adultery that was in matthew chapter 5 verses verse 32 when once you are joined to a wife under no circumstance should you seek another wife unless on the ground of adultery or fornication 
Besides this, and contrary to this rule, it is an offense before God, and God must punish such ones. Did Christ not say, Every plant which is which my heavenly Father had not planted shall be rooted up? Let them alone, they are blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Where anyone marries more than one wife, all the additional wives are not approved by God. Such ones are facing judgment, and they certainly would be rooted up. Sarah married Abraham in this order at the age of 75 years, and immediately the call from God made them to move out of their country onto a land that they would be shown. Abraham took his wife, Lot his brother, and all their belongings and move out. They both live without an issue for up to 99 years when Abraham was promised a child. During these years of Sarah's barrenness, Abraham was not perturbed and he was not tempted to marry another wife or to seek a release order that was a man of God. Zacharias and his wife Elizabeth lived together as one without a child. They continued in this order and did not seek for another wife in order to have a child, as the case is common today. Both were righteous before God, walking in the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blamelessly. They had no child because Elizabeth was barren, and both were now well stricken in years. This is the ordinance of God, and not a matter of money or wealth, which you may claim prevents you from serving God, it is rather a matter of obedience. I am quite aware that you are no teacher all along. That is why I have come. I am speaking from the high heaven and releasing this critic, this vital message to the entire world of mankind. Those living now and those to come. It is a standing statute for time indefinite. All those who want life and wish to see good days must comply to this ordained purpose for marriage. It is an undisputed fact that 99% of the tribulation on earth and even death are caused by the violation of this order. Marriage is a happy union in peace and harmony as father and mother dwelling together as one flesh, having Christ at the, at the head now that you have multiplied wives for yourself, do you see? Do you not see yourself in hellfire? Examine the first lesson again.